y'all ready for the birds? Okay, indescribable. And we're coming over to do the birds. So I did go ahead and do one, yes. And I have lots and lots of pencils pulled. And I've got them grouped together so that I don't have to go back and look it up. So let's get lined up. Let's get zoomed in. And let's get to coloring. All right, I am going to start with the purple. I'm going to start on that area on the bird's back, those feathers, and then travel all the way down and do that tail feather. I am using the Arteza pencils again, 109 and 88. So I'm going to take the lightest shade and I'm just going to do all of it. Notice again, I'm not holding down here. I am holding further back because I don't want to apply a whole lot of pressure and get all that tooth out of the paper yet. I'm just wanting to get a coat or two on here. Okay, I can go a little closer because I can see I'm not getting too heavy yet. So when you're heavy handed like I am, just think about sneaking up on that color, okay? Don't try to get it all on there at one time. Slowly, when you have little spaces, is gonna be easier for you in the long run. Unless it's one of those pages where you're gonna go in and erase. And I have done those before where you go in you do the whole page, well, parts of the page. You do it dark, heavy-handed, and then you erase and leave the stained part of the paper as what's showing. I do that when I do cheeks, the blush. So we need to do another one of those sometime soon. All right, so there's my lightest shade. Now you can see over here on this one, anywhere where it goes into a B or a smaller spot, that's where I chose to do my darker colors. Also up under where the feathers overlap. So that tells me this is in front of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this a little bit darker to start with. And that's just gonna help push that up to the front. Now I wanna fade it. So I'm going lighter and lighter as I come up until it just blends in with the other color. Now I don't have to come back and do any blending at all. If you don't get what you feel like is a good blend to start with, come back with your original light shade and blend them. Okay? So now look at all this right here. First of all, I see this is on top. So I am going to go around that, totally all the way around, and then fade it out. All right, we still see something going on here. This is actually one where one feather is coming this way, and then this one, see how it's tucked under, is coming this way. So right where that overlap is, the one on the bottom, is going to get a little bit of extra shading. So that tells me the shading goes right here. Okay, this is on top of this. So we can come through here, put that shadow in, and we can also come across here because this is on top. And then we want to shade with a fade. So fade that out. Okay, and again, if your shade is not quite as blended as you want, come back in with your lighter shade and just go over that. And I can go over that again anyway because I didn't go real dark on that the first time. And just go back and pick up anywhere where you might need more. 
Now let's move up to this, going back to my second color, my darker color. Now I'm looking at all these swirls. Do you see how there's a tuck in right here? I want to accentuate that. So I'm going to do that. And see how I'm snuck up on the pencil now? Because I am doing quite a bit of pressure. And then I'm going to let it fade out. Okay? So that's kind of like this one where it comes around that curl a little bit. See, I could come around this curl even more just to accentuate that. Again, there's no rules on this. I could come right here. But then I want to fade fast so that this piece doesn't get dark and blend in with that. Okay? So I could have this come on around even some more. I look at this. See this line? It's crossing over this line. So this one is on top. So I can go here and fade out that way. Go here and fade out to the bottom. This one is overlapping this one. And after y'all do quite a few of these where you're having to see what's on top, what's on bottom, it's just going to get easier and easier for you to find these. Now here's a long line here. There's not a lot of these curls like there is over here. So I'm going to find something and just accentuate it. So I chose that long curve line. And then I'm going to go darker up under the edge. See how I went under the edge here? You can see here where I go dark. That's what I'm talking about. This is on top of this. So I can make this edge here darker. Now this is on top of that. So I don't want to go down that full side. I want to let it fade out. And again, it's just picking and choosing. You decide what you want to accentuate, what you want to make brighter, what you want to stand out. I'm going to take this line, like I did this one over here, and I'm just going to backfill that a little bit. Just to get some of this darker shade in there. And because, see how it makes it look like it's moving now? Let's do the bottom of this one. The reason I'm only going at the base of this one, and then I'll fade it out here really quick, is because I don't want all this to be the same color coming across. But now you see we have some lights and darks. All right, I'm going to come back with my lighter shade, and I'm going to go ahead and get some more of the tooth out of this paper. Just deepening that up some. Okay? So when you've got lines, you can use those to show movement just in how you accentuate. See, like this right here? I could go in there, and I could come right up inside this between the two, and then just fade it out. And that just gives a little bit more movement. You can do it right through here. There's no rules on it, y'all. Just play with it. Just play with it and have fun. So that was our purples. Let's go to our pinks, our fuchsias. Our number 81 and 86. This is actually called, is there enough of it on there to read, read it? Plum. And this one was actually called eggplant. So yeah, and they don't look like they're both pinks, but it's going to work. So I'm going to take and do the entire face area.
Let's do the whole thing. Now do you see how this is on top of this? So this is going to stay this lighter color. So I went ahead and snuck up on that pencil and I'm getting all that color in. Okay. So most of my color on this one is probably going to be around here and under here. Because generally, the way the light's coming down, there could be some on the top of that head, but not just a whole lot. And these are kind of like imaginary little birds anyway. Although there is a bird, if you look it up, it's called a painted something. <laughs> I know, it's not real helpful. But no, if you look up painted bird, it'll probably come up. In fact, let's just look it up real quick. Okay, Google. Painted bird. The Painted Bird is a 2020 movie directed by Václav No, Lombard, no, no. Kopler, Kier, we don't want Star that. Star. We want... <laughs> we want an actual painted bird. Oh, that's funny. All right. So, let me just type that in. Everything's going to the movie. What is that? I don't want some movie. I want images of painted birds. <laughs> All right, here we go. Colorful painted bird. It is such a thing. So, just that you know I'm not totally crazy. There is um, painted birds. It's going to make it brighter. I cannot do upside down on my phone. There you go. So there is a painted bird. So if you're wanting to go by that, you'd have done the orange here, the green here, and the blue up here. But I didn't want orange on here because of my flowers being orange. Plus, to be honest with you, I'm not really an orange person, so I will do flowers orange just to make myself use the color. I'm not big on oranges, browns, not totally on greens, but I do like a good army green. Okay, so now I'm going to the eggplant, and I'm going to come under here. And this is where you get more of that fuchsia. There we go. And then just fade it out. I'm going to do, you know what? I'm going to do some right under here on this eye. And then it'll make it look more natural when I go under this eye. Okay. I'm going to come around here some on the back. Because I do want some on here. This is where, you know, we get our color and our shading and all that. That's funny. I didn't even know there was a movie called that. Okay. And I still need to go back into both of these and really get rid of all this tooth that's showing. All that white. See how much more I just covered up, just going over it like this? And it's those extra steps, y'all. Those extra little steps that you take that you're like, oh, it's no big deal. But it it is what just puts your coloring page looking just that much better than what it would have looked. See there? It's just that little bit, but it works. Okay, we're going to go to some blue. I did the beak and the feet. You ready for this? 
68, it's like a periwinkle. Number seven is like a indigo. And then 12 is black. I know I don't use a lot of black when I'm doing animals, but it's really gonna make this pop. All right, so you see I'm really bearing down. I'm just getting that color on right now. Okay, then I'm gonna come back with my other blue that's a little darker. And see how it's really a bright blue? Indigo is really bright, but it pairs up nice with the periwinkle in this set. Okay. So right under the edge, and then at the ends where it's wrapped. Okay. And I am going to come back in with this blue and do some blending. Then I'm going to come in with that black. Now for the black, I went way up here, down here, down here, and here. So I'm going to do just a little bit here. Just at that point. Just at that wrap. See how it makes it look like it's wrapped around and receded just a bit? And that's all I wanted for. Just that little bit. Also the beak. So let's color that beak. Ooh, the tongue's showing in that one. In this one it wasn't. Um, you know what? We're going to do it all. Just going to do all of it. Why well, about the seat of my pants? No plans here. <laughs> all right, so I got the blue. Now I'm going to go with the next shade which is my indigo, and that would be here and here, the tip, and then these triangles. That's probably what I did there. I did, yeah, didn't do the very tip. Let me put some on there. And then I'll come in with the black. Just ever so slightly. Okay, and that's it. I'm just going to leave the tongue in that lighter shade. Now, let me stand up and look and see how we are time wise. Okay, 17 minutes. All right, now we're going to the teals. All right, so it's actually turquoise, which is 17. And then ocean blue, which is 89. And then algae, aging blue, which is 106. So whole thing with your first shade, that whole thing. Just get it on there. I know, you can see how I'm being so careful. <laughs> Not. Sometimes it is about just getting the color on there. But notice how I'm going this direction. I'm not scribbling this way, and then this way, and then this way. That way, if I do start getting lines showing up, they're directional and easier to hide and fix. Saw somebody did a picture the other day, and it was beautiful flowers. And then the vase part of it was just all different directions and it was it was scribbling I thought well maybe they meant that pattern to look like that but the more I looked at it I thought oh, I don't think so so just um, be careful you can get the color on and still not make a mess there so it's all on now I'm gonna come back with the next shade and looking at these I'm like which one's darker so I'm gonna grab a piece of scratch paper 
that I've got laying over here. And we're going to look and see. That looks like a blue blue or a really sharp teal. And that one looks a little bit lighter. So this one's next. So let me hold this one in my hand. Now I'm going to start doing a round in all those curls again. So basically it's the same thing we did before. Just going to find all these little areas where there's V's and see like all of this because this wing is on top. And then fade it out. And you've seen me do fade out before, okay? Up under here, because this is on top of this, and then fade it out. And then I'm gonna do this line here, because this is on top of this. And see, this is on top of that. So let's do that part. This is on top of this. So let's do this area. So some of it you can see pretty easy. And then some of it's not quite as visible. Let's do here. We'll do here. That's just going to give us some movement. Here's one of these swirls. So we're going to do there. Then there's a swirl here. We want to accentuate these swirls so we've got movement. It's all about these birds not looking like they're flat and just sitting. This kind of, does it make you feel like the wind's blowing? just seen, I know some of y'all are like, she's batty. She has just totally lost it. But to me, the lines just give added movement to the picture. So it's just not flat and sitting there, but it's got some interest to it. And that's what I'm after. I'm after the movement. Okay, now was it okay, just one color? Sure. There is nothing there. I've not said it in a while. There are no coloring police that are going to come get you because you didn't add extra stuff. It just doesn't happen. Just look to where you think. <clears throat> Goodness, frog again. Um, look to where you think you could get away with putting some extra color in. Then I'm going to come in with that darker shade. And I'm going to get right up in here. See how that really deepened that up and pushed it to the back? Look here at this spot. I'm really going to get up in here. And do the same thing down here. See how that's really deep and rich looking now? See, I can come over here. I can add more of it. Just add that in there. And I am really bearing down on that pencil. Surprised I didn't snap the lead. But that's where you can really bear down and add. Add that depth. Okay. And really, that's it, y'all. That's it. I'm just going to be coming back in here and adding in some of these areas. And see where this kind of looks, see where this part kind of looks like a blue-green? And then when you look over here, you're seeing more blue. So that's what I'm doing is adding more of this blue into the picture. And you can see how this has got more depth to it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget if you're new, subscribe. 
there's um, a video part one of this that you should be able to find on my channel just right before this one. If you'd like to make a donation, you can follow across the top on your phone where it says about and then click on that and it'll take you over. You can do PayPal. It's very easy and I appreciate those. I do not get paid for any of my coloring videos. Wish I did. That'd be awesome. I'd be on here a whole lot more often. <laughs> But, like I said last time, it's not a high priority right now. I have other things in life going on. Alright, so what do you think? I think I'm going to call it done. I think I'm actually going to leave the eye with that white in there. But, yeah, so there we go. I would call that finished. So I will take a picture of this and pop it on to Coloring Books Keep It Clean. It's a Facebook coloring group for women. And um, I will catch y'all soon. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.